Welcome. What I'd like to do is just kind of go over uh, the basic kind of properties of logarithms. They kind of explain a little bit, you know, why they work and how they work. So the main important thing to understand the properties of logarithms, we first have to understand what a logarithm is. And the most basic way to kind of understand what a logarithm is to rewrite it in exponential form. So let's kind of give an arbitrary example of a logarithm. Let's say I have y equals log base b, and now let's use a, base a of x. To rewrite that in exponential form, that pretty much states a raised to the y power equals x. So when we're looking at a logarithm and I see that a, you know, a to the log base a of x, it's saying a raised to what power is going to equal to x. Now there's kind of two fundamental properties that we need to make sure we understand about logarithms. And I'm going to kind of explain why those logarithms work. The first one is log base a of 1 is equal to 0. And the reason why that works is because a raised to the 0 power equals 1. So I can rewrite this in exponential form. You can see, oh yeah, it makes sense. Anytime, it doesn't matter what my base is, anytime I take a number, raise it to the 0 power, it's going to equal 1. The next property is log base a of a is going to equal to 1. Again, that works because a raised to the first power just simply equals a. Obviously, a is always raised to the first power, so they're going to equal each other. So those are some very just basic understanding of logarithms, some properties that you're going to use and also have to know how to apply. There are also some other properties that we need to make sure that you uh, understand. The first one is the inverse property. And what the inverse property pretty much states, if I have log base a of a raised to the x, that just equals x. Think about it. Um, well, we'll go back through. Uh, it'll probably be better when I explain afterwards, um, as well as a raised to the log base a of x just equals x. The next one is going to be what we call our one-to-one -one property. All right, when dealing with the one-to-one -one property, what that pretty much states is log base a of x is equal to log base b of y. Then x is equal to y. And that's very similar uh, to our one-to-one -one property in, uh, in exponents, which I'll go ahead and uh, explain again as we go through it. But the next couple is the product. And just like the kind of the product with exponents, you can see the product rule uh, for logarithms is very similar. If I have the logarithm log base a of um, w times x, then that's equal to the log base a of w plus log base a of x. Then we have the quotient rule which again is very similar to the quotient rule with exponents, where it simply states if I have log base a of w divided by x, that is equal to log base a of w minus log base a of x. And the last one is the power rule. And what the power rule pretty much states, if I have log base a of w raised to the x, then that is equal to x times log base a of w. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. These are kind of some, these are going to be like what your holy grail, what you're going to be using throughout this whole course. It's very, very important, especially to know the product quotient and power when expanding, condensing, as well as solving. And then the inverse one to one, these are very helpful, to, you know, and these first two properties are very helpful in understanding logarithms, but also being able to apply them. And you can see to make sense for the for the inverse, if I, if I apply my power rule, I bring the x in front, that goes to 1, so x equals x. Um, you can see here, this is very similar to the power rule with exponents. If I have 3 squared equals 3 to the x, obviously 2 has to equal x. Um, and as far as going with the power quotient and product rule, the best thing, I'm not going to go through all of them with numbers, but the best thing is just to use very simple numbers to be able to show that they equal each other. Um, and that's one thing we know we use with exponents, but you could also do that uh, with them, where my, my best example would say, let, why don't you let a equal 2, w equal 4, or w equal 8, and x equal 4. And I guarantee you can, you, by plugging in those values, you can be able to see that all of those examples um, are going to work. And you can prove that each one of those are true. I'm not going to, I'm going to save you the time. Um, but that is just one way to go and show to see to make sure that those products work. Thanks.